Sharon. Welcome back to my channel, aka Classy Shades Designs. If you'd like to learn how you too can create this beautiful tufted mirror without any sewing, then keep watching because I'll give you all the tips that you need. I'll try to list all the items that you'll need for this project down below. Because there are so many items, I'm not going to list it at the beginning like we normally do, but I will try to point them out as we go along. Watch the entire video before you go shopping, but I guarantee you, you will love this mirror. Before we get started, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can be alerted to all the videos that I post. Let's get busy. The first thing you'll need to do is visit your local hardware store and purchase some lumber. I went to Lowe's and had them cut these boards for me. The length is 29 by 13 and they're 5 inches wide. That is enough to make my 13 by 18 mirror frame that I'm going to use. Next I added some wood glue in the seams where they, each piece of wood meets each other to help give it some added support. And then I stapled each joint giving it the extra support that it needed. You'll need a lot of staples for this job, your staple gun, and a little bit of help to help apply pressure on the end of the board. You can see here I enrolled my husband to that job to help apply pressure. Now that I have staples on the first side, I flipped it over and put staples on the bottom side also so that it would be secure on both sides and allow the glue to dry. While that's drying, I'm going to take my large piece of uh, plywood, which is a quarter inch thick and it measures 30 by 35, and I'm going to do a dry fit on how I want the mirror to actually be centered on the board. So here you see me measuring and making sure that everything is the way that I want. You can see the X's and lines that I drew on the frame there and I just put those there to give me an idea of what I would like the tufted uh, marks to be. So here we're fitting it and I'm going to move the mirror around and do measurements. I'm going to measure it at three inches on each side all the way around. The three inch measurements should look like this. You see I penciled out where the mirror will go and where the frame will ultimately be leaving three inches on each side. Now this is based on the size of my board. If you do a smaller board you want to make sure to balance your mirror. Now we'll do a dry fit with the mirror to make sure that everything is the way that we want it to be. And I'm pretty happy with what I see so far. So let's go ahead and get our caulk gun and our mirror glue. You'll need some mirror glue and let's glue that down. We've got a good amount of mirror glue on the center of our board and we're going to go ahead and lay our mirror down making sure to place it within our drawing, our pencil marking of where it should be. We'll just make sure that we get it centered on here and the glue is forgiving for a while until it dries but I'm going to apply a little body weight to make sure that it gets good and sealed down. And then I'll do a dry fit with my frame again to make sure it's exactly what I want before it dries completely onto the board. And things are looking pretty good. I'm looking happy with how it looks before we've got it uh, covered up here. So we'll go ahead and place some painter's tape over this so that the mirror won't move and we'll allow this to dry overnight a good 24 hours so that it will be solidly secure to the board. While that's drying, let's go ahead and put the foam on our frame. And all I did was purchase, here's another item you need, I purchased a mattress pad from Walmart which is much cheaper than buying the foam and I cut it out to the size of the frame. Here you see me trimming off the extra that we don't need. You'll trim it all the way around your frame and then it'll be time to mark where you would like your lines. Now I marked it on the board and you don't have to do that but it gave me an idea of where I want my lines now that I have my foam down. 
and you can see here that all of my lines are marked along with the X's of where I would like to see the tufted buttons and what I'm doing now is just cutting a small slit or a hole in each place that I have an X so that I can nail my button down and this will actually help the tuftedness go a little deeper into the wood and I'll show you that um, better as we keep working and start doing the tufted pieces but we're going to cut each one of our X's so that we can um, prepare it for tufting now that we have that complete, we'll go ahead and put our batting on. And I purchased this batting at Joanne Fabrics when they had their Cinco de Mayo sale, which was 55% off. Again, I enlisted my husband to help me flip it and keep the batting straight. And we're just going to go ahead and secure the batting to the back of the frame. I'm going to leave the center in because it'll help make everything hold tight until we're ready to cut it and staple it. You use your staple gun again and secure it. Now I'm cutting the center of the batting and we will do the same thing. We'll cut it open and we'll pull it taut and secure it to the edges of the inside of the frame. Did I tell you you'll need a lot of staples? You'll need a lot of staples. And go ahead and trim off any of the excess fabric and this is what it should look like this far. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this over to the front one more time. And everything is tight and the way that we want it. Now I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to poke the screw screwdriver or your finger, whichever one works, into the holes that we cut open in our foam. This will help us be able to get our tufting a little deeper since we have a thick foaming. And you'll do this all the way around. Just find the holes, fill them out with your finger, and stick the screwdriver in it. Once that's complete, we'll go ahead and stretch our a faux leather fabric over the frame and the batting and everything that we have there. And we're going to get ready to do some tufting, you guys. But here's what you'll need to purchase for the tufting. I'm just using some wide head nails and I think these are uh, two, what are they, five eighth inch long, but whatever size you need, however thick you make it, that's the size you'll need. And you'll just take the nail and hammer it into the hole that you have there and it should go in like such. Now originally I was using a washer to help me, but I decided that I didn't like the washer so I took that one off and started using it with just the nail head. And I'll show you here what it'll look like soon. So you can see here I've used, I've replaced these with just the nail heads and we're just hammering them into the holes that we have created already to help make this tufted look. Your nail doesn't need to be too long, but it does need to be long enough to go through all of your fabric and through your foam and then make a connection with the board. And we'll just do this in every single hole and every single area that we've created. See how that's already starting to look beautiful? I'm liking it already. Now is a good time for me to remind you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can use any fabric that you want to create this too. I'm just using the faux leather. Let's go ahead and cut the center so we can um, start to make the frame outline by stapling, or stapling things together. I'm going to cut what I can right now on the top and then we'll flip it over and we'll cut the rest on the bottom. Now that we've got the center cut out, we're going to go ahead and secure everything down with the staples just like we did before. Did I mention that you'll use a lot of staples? I think I did. You'll need that on your list. Make sure to buy staples. And we'll secure both the inside and the outside using the same method and to cut off any excess. 
Now I left the corners at the end because I wanted to do uh, make sure that the corners were secure. And all I'm going to do is just fold the corners over because these are going to lay on top of the board and we don't have to have them in any special design. I'll cut off some excess fabric so that we won't have a bulky corner and we'll just do a nice even fold on our corners here. Since we're doing a frame, we have some gaps at the corners and we need to figure out a way to cover those up. What I've decided to do was create a piece of trim that would go along the inside of the frame. And I'm just going to use some hot glue and a piece of the leather stripping that will help cover up those rough edges that we have inside. So all we'll do is take a piece of hot glue and make our own leather trimming off of that just gluing some hot glue down inside of one side and folding it over to meet the other end until it makes us a perfect little trim piece to go inside of our frame. And this is what it should look like when you hot glue the trim piece inside of the frame. It may not be manufacturer or store bought perfect, but it's Sharon Tucker right? I love it. All right, now we're ready to finish working on our larger board we've taken off the painters tape and I've just laid a piece of batting over the entire piece of the board I'm not going to use any of the frame or any of the foaming here because I want this to be flat but I do want to put batting and a piece of the leather over this and right now what I'm doing is just cutting out the batting from the mirror and then I will use some adhesive spray, that's another item you'll need to buy, some adhesive spray to um, help hold the batting in place. And once we get this frame cut out, then we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing with our piece of faux leather over it. Now that we have both the batting and the leather down, we're going to take our staple gun and secure them around the edge of the mirror. Be careful not to staple your mirror here. And then we'll flip the board over and we'll secure both of them, the batting and the leather on the back side again with our staples. Remember I told you, you'll use a lot of staples so make sure that you pick up an extra supply. I hate to see you run out in the middle of the project. All right, so now it's time for us to make sure that all of our measurements are okay and do our measuring to fit our mirror before we secure it to the board. You'll notice that I have the gems or the diamonds that we ordered from Amazon inside of each of the nail head holes. I thought that we recorded it, can't seem to find it, so obviously I didn't hit the record button when we were doing that. All we simply did was snip off the metal backing with some wire cutters and used E6000 glue inside of each of the nail heads and secure the diamonds there. I suggest that we use E6000 instead of hot glue because I wanted a permanent hold to it. And what you see me doing here is measuring around the frame, making sure that I have three inches all the way around before I do a hard secure of the frame to the backing board with screws. You'll also need to enlist someone to help you so that the frame doesn't move when you go to screw it, hold it up to screw it in. So thank God I have a wonderful husband. He's here holding it and applying pressure to it while I am securing the screws in the back of the board. Here I am checking everything to make sure that it's got a secure and sound fit and that nothing moved on me. And then we'll flip it over one last time and we'll add additional screws into the back of the board to make sure that the mirror is safely and securely held onto the back frame. Now I'm going to secure the picture hanging hooks that I purchased at Lowe's as well. And these are a hundred pound hangers so that um, you'll put them 16 on the stud. So what we did is measured out 16 inches to make sure that it would be hanging on studs because of the weight. And we're securing those on now. 
and here's the final result I have it propped it against the wall because I haven't had time to hang it but I think it's beautiful overall it took me about eight hours to create tell me what you think leave me a comment down below and as always you guys thanks for watching and stay classy until next time